last song before the high praise got up. I might want to begin, so you better get ready. But I heard what you were saying in reference to your songs and praise. And all I hear was prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Now, before you get caught up in agreement with me, you have to understand what the word prove it means. Amen? See, I'm, 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 I'm caught between two poles. Amen. I'm caught between the man of God and the man. The man of God wants to sit down and shut up. But the man of God says, prove it. Prove what you say you are. Show the fruit of what you're proclaiming. Let the evidence of what you're screaming about be made manifest that you say we're stomping on the devil's head. Yes. I heard you sing. Yes. I heard the children yes. do little things across the floor. I seen it. I, I watched it. Yes. I watched them coordinate it so they could step on it in order. <laughs> you know, I watched it. I seen this. I seen each one of you sit there and do something on the devil's head. But I'm saying, amen, to prove it. Prove it, because if I really stepped on the devil's head, I can't be what I was before I stepped on the head. Mm -hmm. Shall I wait for everybody to get here? If I can hear me one time, it's, it's more than just what you saying. What you said in reference to how good the music made you feel. You said that you're stepping on. That's a proclamation. Yes, sir. That is a statement that says, I'm now stepping on the, there's only one kind of person that can step on the devil's head. There's only one type of individual that has the ability to step on the head of the serpent. There's only one type, amen, of creation that has that power to be able to crush his head under their feet. Now rather than look at that window and then dance and shout, now you can look at me and pay attention. You made a statement out loud if you think for one minute that your enemy's not going to challenge you on it, he's going to. Because he's also from Missouri. I'm a New Yorker. I'll prove it to you. All right. You made a public statement that reached into the atmosphere of darkness and said out loud, I'm stepping on the devil's head. The other song was stretch out on the word of God. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't just hear the beat, did you? You heard the word. Stretch out. Did you children hear the word stretch out? On the word. It means to exercise a faith further than it is right now. I'm persevering to another place and I'm stretching out on God's word that God's word may be proved in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. You stir up the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Now see if you can rise to the occasion.
and prove it out. Yes, Lord. Oh, glory, God. Hallelujah. Now you had your fun. Now let's get down some back. Huh? You did your calisthenics. Let's get to some real walking here. Yes, Jesus. Everything is hollering in this church. Everything is yelling in this church. He's not concerned about the newborn baby 
They don't know too much because they can't really fight for themselves in the first place. Come on. But you all want horses. Yeah. You individuals who have walked through the valleys and the hillsides Hallelujah. and fought your adversary coming and going. Yes. Yes, sir. So he got you where you've been sleep, so you ain't been a threat, but suddenly you got this horse and you stepped yeah. on the devil's head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know
Let us call upon the name of Jesus, who has declared that they know him in the pardon of their sins. I heard I don't know this morning. I heard y'all out here clapping. But maybe you were clapping because he was excited. When do you clap? Because you're excited for what God said to you. Maybe you got caught up because he was all caught up, amen, in the spirit and in his emotions got tapped on by the Holy Ghost. And you can say, yeah, go ahead. But you tell him to go ahead where? Because he's dragging you with him. Senator acknowledges the truth is not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Okay. Why? Because this is not just an acknowledgement of truth, this is a living truth. Yes. It operates, it functions, it brings into being, it puts into focus. Yes. yes, sir. Yes. It does, Pastor. Yes. About two years ago, it must be about two years ago, I asked some of our young people, especially one particular one, I said, You gonna be my little praiser? Yes, Pastor. Hallelujah. But you can't be my praise if you don't want to live here. That's right. You can't just praise God because I looked at you. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, it right. happens. You go ahead. Right. That's right. You can't stop praising God and glance at me and see if you got my approval. Oh, yeah. All right, now. Which means you're under the wrong person because that's what the devil does. Right. That's my right. Praise is something that's centered in the house of your vessel. Real praise, amen, is only motivated by the very word of Almighty God. Praise stimulates, amen, the movie of the Spirit, and the Spirit stimulates praise. The joy of God is a sustaining force in the midst of all your trials. The joy of God is a sustaining force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Oh, man be in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still, my God, say, how many of you really know that we are in Christ Jesus yes. today? Yes. You know what we're in? Not next, next to you. You understand what I'm saying? Let, let me make it real plain to you. Let me make it real, real plain to you. Being in Christ Jesus is a far cry from walking with Christ Jesus. I know that's right. Come on in. Thank you, Jesus. Being touched by God doesn't mean that God's living in you. Come on, come on, make God living in you is a perpetual move of God. Yes. Because he said, I will walk up and down yes, in you. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yes. He will walk up I'll and down. down. See, when you can be perfectly still when God is, amen, speaking to the depths of your heart, because you got the name and God's not walking yet. Jesus! The reason why you're so still is because you're still under conviction. But when God is, amen, forgiving you, conviction leads you. And when conviction leads you, joy filters in. Some of you want to give God some praise because of gracefulness. You felt the burden of your transgression, but now it's gone. You felt the pain of your sin, but now it's gone. And now I want to give God the praise. I desire to give God the praise. There's something moving in these spirits. I call the Spirit of God. I have to give God the praise.
on your children. When I see them dead Sunday after Sunday. They just hip swingers. They just love to do it. But then they act like some of y'all. They sit down and get tired and pump it out. Children died. I may have been in the dark for a while. 
couldn't find my way out. I, I may have gone through something that had me down for a season. I, I, something apparently had happened that made me close up and I can't seem to find my way. But you know, there's still something rolling around in the depths of my soul that tells me I'm not what I once was. I, and I can't go back to life what I used to be because the God of my salvation I'm going down there, Elder, so you know I'm going to be here. Hallelujah. All things. All things. Yes, yes, yes. All things. Here's what you're fighting. You're fighting your old things. You're fighting. Mm, you're fighting your old things. The old way of thinking. The old behavior patterns. The old ideologies. I'm going to give you a little help this morning. Hallelujah to the King Eternal. You're fighting what people said to you. Fighting your old habits that seem to crop up inside of you. You're fighting how you felt when you was two years old. You're fighting how you felt when you was 29 years old. I'm here to tell you the Bible that old things have taken you. Maybe they captured for a minute. Maybe what I'm snagged you. Maybe a arena locked a chain around your ankle. Maybe what I'm gagged you for a season. But because you are a new Because you are a new creature. The obligation of the one that made you like that. Yes. Since I can't leave you in that condition. I, yeah, I knew you was wrong, Israel, but I'm not going to keep you like this. I know you sinned against me, Israel, but I'm not going to keep you like this. I know you lied, it was church as Judah, but you're still my child. You still belong to me. I'm the one that begot you. I brought you out of Egypt. I delivered you through the Red Sea. I kept you in the wilderness of sin. I preserved you. And I'm not letting the devil take back what belongs to me. Amen. I don't care about the religious individuals that you see in your life. And you know why I don't care about them? Because they ain't got no other power than suggest wrong to you. Yes. Yes. Did you understand? Yes. And before we knew the difference, Pamela, they were able to captivate our minds because they sound like they were right. Ooh, because they were the they, they were the majority of thinking. I say that they were the majority of the thinkers. They they were it was more than one or two of them sitting in a seat. Yeah. It was more than three or four of them, amen, on the roster. But God lifts up one, <laughs> just one individual who has a fire in their mouth and a flame in their belly, and the truth is in their veins. And they're not going to be loved, and they're not going to be liked, and they're not going to be cared for. But one thing you've got to say, they will not let you die without knowing the truth and give you the opportunity to get what your stuff should have been right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Old things have passed away. Yes. Oh, I know you're still human. Don't misunderstand me. I got that part. But I'm not talking about those old things. Ooh. And in those things, you'll learn how to mortify as you walk with Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. I see you didn't sleep. I'm going to shut the message down for you. So you have to go home and go to sleep. This mother today. Maybe you got a dinner at home and your belly is crying out louder than your soul. Maybe Brother Jerry, I'm, 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 I'm in the wrong place and I need to stop what I'm doing. Amen. So y'all can go back to what you were and be comfortable in what you've been. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to hear what I got to say, young people, because the world, amen, like it got your parents, got you too, huh? Hallelujah, hallelujah. The one thing I like about it is you're going to have to make a decision by yourself because you want to go to hell alone. I feel my newness standing up this morning. <laughs> you gotta understand that when I sometimes I'm looking for a miracle, I'm like God, I need to see a miracle. He said, "Don't you understand? You are. You are. You are. Every one of you that's ever been born again, you are. You're the greatest miracle the planet has ever witnessed. You're the greatest miracle that God has ever been able to perform on the planet. Not the moon standing over the valley of Jason. Not the sun who ring the heavens. Not the Red Sea split. Not an axe float. God, you are the greatest miracle that God has ever performed. Because he took something that was dirty, vile, and stinky that belonged to the very depths of hell that Satan owned in the 
should have been, and I would be the first one born from the dead. I'm born from the dead this morning. My God, I'm born from the dead. I was a child of death. You can make up any reason you want to. Give me any excuse you feel like it. You can whisper to the Holy Spirit about I'm trying. But let me tell you what God is saying. You are a liar. And the truth is not in you. Because he just told me that he may be in Christ. Yes. My God, you've been proclaiming you got the Holy Ghost, proclaiming you're born again, proclaiming you know this Jesus. How can you know him and still walk away with him? Yes. Right, my, Lord. my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How can we come in his presence and still sit here like he ain't did nothing? Thank you, Jesus. i tell you how, because most of you are still very religious. Church belongs in church. Is that the truth? That's how the church belongs in church. That's why you got no church at home. Because church belongs in church. Praise only belongs here. Joy only belongs here. The Holy Spirit only belongs here. At home, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I'm not into that church stuff at home. But I, I share. I heard the word of God clear your father. Amen. We are the body of Christ, the flesh and his bone. He's the head. Oh my God, wherever I am, he's with me. Wherever I put my foot, I own where I stand. He's still king eternal. He's the Lord my God. He's the I am that I am. There's no problem greater than my Savior. There's no condition larger than my God. Overcome his word, he declared my liberty. Yes. Hallelujah. Yet, 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 yet. Who am I going to say? It was a time a, a little young lady would run to the front of the church and point them out and say, Praise, Pastor. Now they sit there with destitution wrapped around their brain because this is just a, this is just going to church. It's just driving out to A Harbor and participate for an hour or so, and then they don't want to do anything for the rest of the movie. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. While you're smiling, go ahead, children. Praise God. They got nothing at home, man. That's the last time you see him. Because you always hope that maybe God's going to touch him in church. But well, I like to see God touch somebody at home, huh? Yes. 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 Maybe you were praising at your house. Maybe that would extend. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yes. But that means I do praise God at home. Hold it. I can't prove it by me. Prove it. Because I'm a praise at home. I'm a praise at wherever I go. Yes. Praise where I am. I can't, I can't sit here and shut my mouth. I can't be quiet while the Holy Spirit is articulating to me the perfect will of God. Why, why can't I do it? Because I'm a new creature. The things that held me captive yes. passed away. The thing that made me quiet is gone. The things that held me in silence is no more. It's no more. It's no more. Amen. Until you believe it, you're still bound up. Yes. Baby, you're just still bound up because you don't believe it yet. You gotta believe it. You gotta mix what I'm saying, amen, with what I'm saying. You were faith, real God faith. In order for it to work, you gotta mix it with the faith that God. Faith, faith has a language of its own. What I really believe. Oh, can I just tell you about the man at the gate? Beautiful. That all we believe he's going to hear. He was going to get something. He never got from it. While he was at the gate, he was one day, two people. Okay? You know what amazing me? That, 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 that Peter and John was doing this often. They didn't just start it. They've been doing it. But this one day, oh my God. Just, for some reason, this one day stuck out history of the book. This was their custom. It was their custom to go to the house of prayer. That was their custom. That's what they did. But on this day, something transpired. On this day, maybe because all the prayer they've been doing, all the getting close to God, all the drawing nigh to the Lord, all the amen, hearing the Spirit, but for some reason, they might hear Something unexpected, something not planned, something not looked forward to. My God don't need to look forward to it. He has a point in time. He is going to do it. He didn't stop being what he was. He was still a beggar. But you understand something about him. He was always in the same location every day. If I can get you in the same location. Every day. 
guarantee. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, yes. oh. Thank you, Jesus. And just by chance, after hearing them all, they've been hearing them for a while now, but this day they heard him Thank you, Jesus. by the ear of the Holy Spirit. They heard his faith cry out with expectancy. Oh, he was stopped and to his fast design somewhere. He looked at him and for some reason he felt something different than the other days. And he said to him, I don't have what you want, but in essence, I sort of got what you need. Hallelujah. And I didn't really understand it until last night. He looked at the man and commanded him to do something. Yes. That's what the sink in for me for somebody. Yes. He told him to do something. The man had been expecting something for a long time. See, I, I, I feel it. It's already stirring in my soul. It's, it's the return. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? My brother elders, do you understand what I'm saying? My brother, I'm saying he had to, he, for some reason, just looking at him wasn't enough. Just standing in his mess wasn't enough. I'll tell you what, at that moment, Apostle Peter realized that he had enough faith to react. In other words, if he was told to do something, now he had enough faith to at least try it. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know he had enough faith to believe that if he heard something, mm -hmm. ah. he'll be able to at least attempt to do it. Yes. Oh, yes. So Peter said, I don't have the thing you're asking for. Mm -hmm. yes. Someone's asking God for something. I'm here to tell you, I don't have mm. what you're asking for. Yes. But I do, God. What you need. Yes. So he says, silver and gold I don't have for you, my brother. Oh, yeah. That which is your desire to, amen, help preserve your natural man, I don't have it. I don't have the money so you can go get a burger. I have the money so you can probably sit down and have some coffee and bagels. I have the money for you to take home and get a loaf of bread and some bologna sandwich. And he makes a bologna sandwich. But I'm going to give you what I have. What I have is greater. Than what you've been asking for. Yes. What I have is greater yes. than your aspirations. Yes. What I have is greater yes. than your ambitions. Yes. What I have is greater than your wannabe relationships. I don't hear nobody talking about yes. yes. What I have is greater yes. than what you think you should have. That's right. At that moment, without him knowing what it was. Did you hear what I said about the He didn't know what it was. He had no understanding. You see, there was no, Mama Mac, there was no logical reason for him to believe what he was talking about when what he wanted was gold and silver. Yes. Yes. What else could he possibly be expecting but something that was tangible enough for him to handle what was going on in this life? And here this man said, I don't have that. Now you gotta ask him, well, what you got? Because if you ain't got what I need, what you standing here for? That's exactly what it'll be mine. The problem is that you still don't know what you need. Hallelujah! Oh God. And because Peter was a man of prayer, I hear you hope coming, Holy Spirit. Because Peter was a man of perpetual prayer, a man that stayed in the presence of God, a man, a man that amen, was under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. It took him a little time, but God got a hold of him. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't understand it before. It wasn't in his mind before. He didn't have it in his heart before, but on this day, because he'd been doing his, he'd been going to prayer for a while. He'd been studying the scripture that he told somebody earlier. It's not feasible for me to work at tables. So, ah, because I got to give myself to prayer and fasting. Why? So that God can move on him the way he was getting ready to move on him at that moment. Thank you, Jesus. 
John just stood there in agreement. Sometimes you have to understand God's purpose. He said, look, I don't, I don't want you to do that. I'm just standing in witness. Because I, I don't know if two or three witnesses let my word be established. Don't open your mouth. Just stand and watch my glory. So when you two stand together, you both say the same thing. Same thing. Right. Same thing. He had to tell him to do something. And Elder Jenna, Elder Noble, in this day and age, we don't want to do that anymore. Come on, make it plain. I found out that we want them to make their own decision. But sometimes you can't when your mind is bound by your circumstances. You can't make the decision because your mind's encumbered by the things that's plaguing and worrying you. He was plagued by his condition and worried how he was going to eat at the end of the day. He was worried about going home with nothing or, or hoping to go home with something. His mind was encumbered. That didn't hear what I'm saying. His mind was encumbered. Your mind sitting here now is encumbered with something else than what I'm talking about. Yes. Your mind is encumbered by a thought and idea, amen, that is not coming from above. It's to deter you from what I'm saying. It's to close your mind down. Say, but God put him in a position where this day his mind didn't get closed down. And see, God was not actually preparing Peter as he prepared the man. Sometimes we're wasting words trying to get you to understand because your mind is in color with something else. God's not ready to move until you're ready to listen. He's not ready to show his miraculous grace until you want his miraculous grace to be manifested in you. Yes, Lord. When he looked upon the man, he realized that the man sat there with expectancy from his heart. He needed to hear something. I'm waiting to hear your next chain of events. What are you going to say? You see, I'm say that. He heard him say, I don't have that. So what's the next thing you're going to do? You're going to think, well, what do you have? He didn't say, I don't have anything to give you. That's not what he said. He didn't say, I don't have anything to give you. Understand the scriptures. He didn't imply it. He didn't make a statement like he didn't. He said, silver and gold I don't have. But the word but change the scenario of the desire. Because but said there's something other than. Hallelujah. And all he said, but I give unto you that which was given unto me. And somebody said, that doesn't make no sense. You can't do that. But you forgot what was given. He didn't say get saved. He didn't say come get born again. Come on, somebody. He didn't say, come on, let me just come on, let's walk into church together. He said, who pick up and it'll take the burden that you've been laying on. Take the burden that you've wrapped yourself up in every single day of your life. Take the thing that you've been laying out in the cold and the heat, your security blanket, so to speak, that you're comfortable with. And I want you to roll it up. The word roll means put up. I want you to roll it up like you're never going to use it again. Do you understand? The terminology is pick up your bed. Pick up means to roll it up. Right. With the expectancy that you're never going to be on it again because that's what they carry them there in. Yes. They carry them in that thing because they can't walk. Mm -mm. This is a support system. Oh, Help me, Holy Ghost. Why are you giving this to me today? This is a support system. This is the only thing he knew. They grabbed the mattress or when they wanted to pick him, they could carry They would pick him up because you're not supposed to touch unclean things. They shut up. Hallelujah. So they grabbed him. And so in that case, he was unclean because he was diseased yes, according to the Jewish law. Yes, sir. That's the word. So they took him. He had, a, he had whatever kind of mattress or offering. He laid in that and they grabbed that and hauled him around in that. Yes, they did. Because when you pick up the thing you've been laying in, pick up the thing that's been your amen crutch, pick up the thing that you 
you've been wilding around in morning, noon, and night, and I want you to roll it up. Ah! Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. That's step one. Now, if I may say the other day, that's a process. Because see, sometimes you start rolling up and you start reminiscing. But it's taking you a long time. You said, well, that stain came when I was. Your stain is your memories. And I drew it over there, and that's when I pee peed myself. And that's when I didn't make it to the bathroom to do number two, and this, that. And then you begin to smell it because nobody takes time to wash it because it's unclean. There's all the odors of your yesterday wrapped up in it. Can anybody hear what I'm saying to you? The Spirit of God is really talking to you this morning. You're smelling the odors of your yesterday that's triggering the effects of your conduct today. And you're rolling it up. And finally, after you get it rolled up, there's another command. That means you gotta grab a hold of it. So you as a God, you take it. God said, I want you to pick it up. Because I'm gonna make it part of your cross. Wow. I'm gonna make it something to rejoice in and not to moan over. Okay. I'm gonna make it something that people can look upon and say, but didn't you used to? Yeah. And out of your mouth will burst forth the seeds of praise. Why? Yeah. Because you used to lay on it. Mm -hmm. You used to smell the aroma, but now something has happened to hey! you. Then he said, I want you to get up and walk. I want you to take your first step to your new life. I want you to take your first step to your new existence. You're giving to leave what you used to be at on your first step in the direction I'm giving you. You're leaving what you once was. You're never going to unravel that bed and lay it down on the ground again. Nobody's ever going to carry around on the things you used to lay on. Nobody's ever going to pick you up in the things you used to be in. Matter of fact, they're going to never want to touch you right now because you're too hard. Upon that elder gentleman, he took his first step to new life. The deliverance from the bondage of the sickness has held him, amen, for all the years of his life. From the sickness and the stench of the disease of what he had to do on this bad thing he carried. From the look of people's disdaining eyeballs. From the comments and statements that people jeer at him. Yes. And when he could have finally did what he wanted to do. Jesus. Even Peter didn't know that God made a change in his heart. And where he wanted to be was where they were going. Yes. He ain't know nothing about it, but that's where his heart was at. He never been in it before because they won't let you in. You're not clean. You're not welcome in the worship place. You're not welcome inside the temple. You're not welcome in the sanctuary hall. You're not welcome in the front of the church. Sat inside and mow God was performing the greatest miracle man has ever witnessed. That which was captivated by the devil, chained by the devil, bound by the devil, caught up in the religious overtones of the devil. God set him free in moments. Yes, moments. Yes, moments. Yes, moments. Yes. Moments. Yes. Yes. Abraham's heart said, I want to go into the place that I've never been able to go in before. Yes. I want to go to where I've, I've heard things yes, in there, yes. but I've never been able to go see if I want to go in there. That's where yes, I want to go. Yes. And because these two men I've been watching going there every single day as of their cousin, I'm going with them. Why? Because they're the only ones that stood by and told me something that nobody was willing to tell me. He was out there, Lord, as a stinking, smelly beggar. When he walked in the temple Hallelujah. as a man made whole. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And for a while he held on to Peter and he held on to John's arms yes. because he was getting his sea legs back. You know, they've been, they been gone for a little while. And he went in to praise God. He was in there giving God the praise. He broke ceremony protocol. Yes. He broke the tradition. He yes. broke the action. 
action of the high priest. He broke the action of the Levite. He broke the action of the sanctuary. He didn't care because they were in there moaning on the phone and then he didn't care because they were all quiet with their little simple prayers. He broke the whole time and he stepped in hit the door yelling and praying to God. The Bible said he was leaping up. My God, he didn't walk in it with his head hung down like we like to do when we walk in like this. He had his head up and he was leaping down the aisle. He was giving God the praise. He was magnifying the glory of the God. He was healed from his body, delivered from his condition. Why? Because he was waiting for somebody to say something to him. Yes. 
The good part is that sometimes when God is moving, the devil comes to church and gives you a headache. Oh, Father. You know he knows how to He'll give you a, a backache. Yeah. Uh -huh. Give you a upset stomach. Yeah. Uh -huh. That happened. The pain you didn't have in the morning, you got to that morning. Oh, and now that lets me know that the Spirit of God is on the right track. Oh, because your enemy is trying to stop you from receiving your own deliverance. Yeah. When you was clapping before, now you got an attitude because you went back and thought about something that pissed you off. Come on, somebody. That ain't but the devil just got these words with you right now. To shut your eyes so you I can't speak to because you have no expectancy. Oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. See, I'm beginning to realize that way I can't speak to certain people because you have no expectancy. And God's word will not drop to the ground, boy. Therefore, I'm not going to speak it so it can. He spoke it because he knew that in this man's heart, he was going to respond to it. Oh, God, yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord. Yes. what are you doing? I'm preparing the ground. I'm cutting out a section of earth to make a pool. Yes. And then we'll stand in the water and trumpet. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Can I? I'm trying to get out of here more time. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, as it goes to say, behold, all things become new, and all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus? What do anybody understand the word reconciliation? Can, can, I, can I change that word from joint to engrafted? See, join means there's a place that you can see where the dividing line of two things came together. And grab that you can't find where they're attached at. Yes. So I want you to understand that. See, you, when you say, I'm joining Jesus, the devil said, yeah, but I see where you enjoy this, so I work on that crap. But when you got a solid piece of material, you can't find no seam. It's all mixed together. You don't know where, what came last and what came first. Today you are engrafted. Do y'all understand what I just said to you in the spirit? You, you're reconciled. You are engrafted. You are engrafted. You are knitted out of the same material that he is. You are engrafted. There's no seam. There's no place to show that you wasn't ever there. There's no place to show that you were at all. You were at all. You were engrafted. Because that's where you joined the bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you understand this principle, he can't find where you came together. Can't find it. That's right. It's just like he was talking about the olive bush and how you engraft the wild bush into the olive bush. At the, the, that first engrafting you can find. Yes. Yes. Give it a year. You can't see where they spice these two together. No, Why? Because they become engrafted one to another. Yeah, together, they yeah. become one. God, don't you know the day you are engrafted, you are infused. Yeah. You are of the same material. You can't be separate. You can't be There's no little piece of the thread to cut, to cut the two parts apart. Please continue to pray because God is really talking to some of y'all in here. Yes. As you are in Him, He's giving you the ministry to do the same to somebody else. I can speak your engraftedness. By the word of God are you delivered. We are kept by the word of His power. Paul said it the way I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? For it is the power of God. Did you hear that word? Yes, sir. Not some, not part. It's all the power of God. Unto them that believe. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. Hallelujah! Oh God! 
The reason why you know, we can understand it because I can feel even now some of you are receiving what I'm getting. You feel it, but you don't know what to do with it. It's moving, but you don't know how to respond to it. It's unusual to you because nobody said this to you. You are not separated. You've never been separated. Nor can you be separated from God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But he said, he said these words. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make me if you continue in my word. If I may say that, I have to stop. Your thoughts that you're thinking doesn't always come from you. No, it doesn't. Jesus. No, it does not. Yes, yes. That's a true statement. You know, some things we've been, we've been taught as, as people coming up in God didn't come from the Holy Spirit. Oh, wow. It came from religiosity that sounded like the Holy Spirit. You know, you know what? You know, I know it's Holy Spirit like because it always applied to a duty or a performance. And never a faith. That's right. If you were trained to perform this way, then you're nothing more than a circus bear. And you respond to your cue. Yes. <laughs> so when your cue card is hit, you you perform. Come on, Pastor. You do the same thing all the time because that's what you're trained to do. You hold up the loop, the bear jumps through. You put a cracker in, and Polly says, I want a cracker. <laughs> and every time you get your cue card, that's how you act. It's when you act outside of your cue card. Hallelujah! It's when the cards held up and you're not saying what's going on. It's when some of these are your words coming out of your belly, coming out of your heart. You're not, you're not dancing the way you are accustomed to dance because how you expect to dance at that moment. Now it's a new kind of dance at a most inappropriate moment. Ain't hey! nobody put your cue card up, but you can't keep your feet still. Ain't nobody hit your number. Get your number not on the board. And if you start acting outside of what you're used to, and be like, wait a minute, I didn't teach you that. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Tell you something. 
something. You didn't need a cue card because we had no music on this Did you hear know what I said? We had no music. Do you understand what I just said? We had no modern music, traditional music, old time music. Y'all hear me? See, you stuck with your kind of music. That's why you can't give God no praise. China, I'm trying to keep it together. You have nothing but somebody suddenly getting up talking about Jesus. That's it. Somebody said how good he was and you lost yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody got to jump in and you lost it. Yes, yes, yes. The songs you sung, you sung out of your heart. Yes, we did. There were songs that moved your soul. Yes. There were songs up to the name of the glorious name of yes, Jesus Christ. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Nobody could stop you. You didn't care what I was saying. You kept on shouting, shout past me and shout over me. Yes. Because inside of us, how powerful the word was. Oh, yes. What is that? It's not like, amen, you that are in your 30s don't understand it because you were there. Yes, yes, yes. And many who were participants of it, it moved across you, yes. it's flowed on you. A few a month or two ago, you watched it happen to your own kids. Yes. They're right here weeping and crying, yes. praising God. That's the way you used to look. Yes. What happened to you? What happened to you? Lord. Come on, and you took it from them yes. because you didn't add your part in yes. with them. Yes. Yes. They were striving. At that moment, it was God leading them into the newness of life. When tears used to come down our faces because we love God so much. So much. Weeping right there in our seats. Sometimes the girls would come to the altar and just gather around the altar while I was preaching and, and baby girls would run off in the back and the aisle and preach, Pastor. Not because it was that, because the word was doing something inside of her little soul and the adults were losing their mind. What happened to you? When did you lose it? My, my, my. Don't tell me the world got a hold of you. It couldn't unless you wanted it. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me you forgot the miraculousness of God already. Don't tell me you forgot what God has done to you and in you and through you and for you. Now, I mean, so you don't even come up and touch me when I'm under the power of God because you used to want it. Now you've got to stay away from it because you're going to be moved on that way because you want to look outside of your character. You know what that, I'm sorry, baby, you want that pretty bow on the floor. You want your hair messed up. You sat in one day and seen one of the sisters grab me and fall on the knees and cry and well, and you don't want that to be you. Or you've got so deep in the Lord, you won't think that God can still move on you like that because you're so, amen, intense. But you're so intentional, it got quiet. Yes. Mm, I'm trying yes. to share yes. something today. We were noisy people, yes. loud mouthed people. We were. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. That was a whole problem wherever we went. People understand what's wrong. They might have played a single song. And some of y'all with them, I'm sorry, even some of the congregation was embarrassed by that. Yes, they were. I went up to the lake and got caught up in the lake, which I couldn't shut up. I know Pastor Farmer and their congregation out there. But y'all would think you are born again, they don't join us. They didn't. They laughed at us. And I had a few of my own members embarrassed because I'm out here speaking in tongues right. and giving God the glory. Yes. Yes. How do you get it like that? You were caught up and how? Do you get it like that? It was inside of you too. Christ tabernacle, who has bewitched you? Oh my God, Jesus. My God, Hallelujah. Some of you got married and lost your joy. Come on, Pastor. Over some woman, some man. How? How did it happen? You lost your house and suddenly you God didn't deserve any praise anymore. You got sick in your body, but you forgot he healed you up. Yes, he did. Asha. My Hallelujah. How did we get to this beautiful state that you can sit in the church and watch the Spirit of God move and become unaffected? When, glory, all the people become pew bumps and just sit there and watch 
somebody else. Begin to watch you stirs me up. To see you break out, get a hold of my own spirit. I can't sit still. I won't sit still. Call on Jesus. Yes, it is. 
I'm just about to run. And has committed unto us, this is, has committed unto us in that 19 verse, has committed, has committed. unto us the word of reconciliation. Yes. That's how I do it. That's how you do it. Yes. Yes. That's what Peter did. He spoke it into. And when he spoke it into the man, the response of the man brought about God's will. When the last time you responded to God's will, you yeah, spoke it to me. Yeah. I may be real simple. I sit here right now. I can say, come on, give God a praise. I can say with a force. And some of you, if you're not going to say this, you're going to be mad. Some of you that are really dancing and praises won't give up. You'll clap, but you won't shout. You won't jump. You feel like jumping, but you won't jump. You won't jump. You won't. You're just going to sit here. You got fire in your legs, but you keep putting cold water on it. <laughs> you better not dance. You got a flame in your mouth, but you got your jaw locked up tight. You can feel the power of God running through your body. You let me holler, amen, real quick one day in the Holy Ghost, and those two women's babies will leap in their belly. You know why? Because they're in front of the field with you. Position is potentate. Right. His position, oh 
consumed by it. God is the satisfier of God. He's serving, but he sent me here by baptizing me in him and said, you represent me. Amen. And whatever you say in my name, according to my will, I will perform as though I'm right there. That's why said, you shall cast out demons. That's why said, you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. The promise not be laying a hand upon it. You don't believe. My God. Well, Pastor, how you know? Because you can't move off the word I'm speaking. That man moved off the word. Yes, he did. Yes, Lord. My God. Yes. Woo. Cornelius didn't get hands laid on him. He got baptized because he heard the word. And he believed it. Oh, yes. Selections and it moves you, but it doesn't sustain you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's a good melody. I, I told those gentlemen things you played on Saturday, Thursday night. Well, I liked it. That was nice. Yeah. It was nice. But how long did it last? Yes. Today is Sunday. Yeah. Yes. How long did two songs you heard today last? Oh my God. Will it still motivate you to stomp on the devil's head yes. at six o'clock? Well, you're still going to stretch out on God Monday morning. Do they motivate spiritual functions in you? Or are they just a sweet little melody where our children get some calisthenics? And they keep the little girly shapes in line. Or does it have an impact that make you even something you wasn't? Imagine you go and leaving out here today stay Staying in the spirit all day, and what happens tomorrow when you reach your other destination? Can you imagine that different? One, two, three of those go to the same school, and that's three witnesses. That's three powerhouses. That means three people praying. That means three people moved by the spirit. Three people. Hallelujah. Has the ability to call down the glory of God through prayer. Praise God. But they're not going to do that. They're not going to do it, Pam. They're not going to do it. Because their peers got the best of them. Oh, yeah. The two girls that back there, that, you know, just, I just let me to shout, and baby girl loves the Lord. I know she does. But the point out that when she, the word of God comes, and people oppose her, she gets quiet. What about you, amen? Brother works on a job where he can work, he can chop a can of head. Chop a can of him. Yeah. He can pray from the top from all the way down. And watch the power of God begin to operate. But he's not going to do it because he caught up with proper Come on, Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. You're, not a, you're not doing your assignment. You are police officers in the spirit. He's defeated, yes, but he's a rebel. You got 
make them obey the word of God. Yes. But it's your vanities, your, your idiosyncrasies, your, your personal, whatever you want to call it, that stops you from walking in the ambassadorship of Jesus Christ. You are his representatives. Out of your mouth yes. is the words of life yes. and death. You can, one of you can hold back of the hoid of hell if you had to just by giving God the praise in Jesus' name. And if one of you can do that, how, how many can two do? Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. Can you imagine the breakthrough you can have over the kingdom of darkness if you ever get to the place where you use your lips for anything other than complaining? Come on, that's the truth. I don't know what to say. Then holler out! Yes, Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. fiber of your being. May angels gather around where you are. May demons tremble and run for cover because a praiser, a glorifier of God has stepped in the sanctuary. Get up off the quiet pews of silence and tell God with every breath I take I'm going to praise you as loud as I can and I don't care who don't like it. You know how hard that is for us nowadays? Because it may interfere with our little things that we are into and incorporate it. I often told you to get on the bus and yell one time, the bus driver might put you off. But that's something I don't mind getting off. I catch the next bus. Because I left something on that bus that you'll never entertain. It's going to be in the mouth of people for you for weeks and months. I was on the bus and this, this, this. They had Jesus. And they get to pray for man. They're crazy, but you didn't understand something. They're witnessing. Yes. Of what Jesus did yeah. in somebody. Yes, amen. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. As though God did beseech you by us. We are his ambassador of Christ as though God did. God picked you by him. We pray you and God in Christ's stead be thou reconciled to God. That word record means continually. Engrafted. Mm -hmm. See, I already know you're engrafted, but it's a continuation. Yes, yes, yes. It's a continuation. Yes, yes. You're becoming more yes. engrafted. It gets to a place where you won't be able to tell the difference between you and God. Yes. Wow. That's what Philippians was saying. He said he, he said he was equal with God. He was equal with God. He is the one that chose not to make a reputation for himself. Mm -hmm. In other words, you couldn't tell which one was who because they were just identical. He said, my father and I are one. If you're in Christ, you're one with Christ and with the Father. You're one. Yes. There was a threesome made one. Now it's a foursome made one. Mm -hmm. Whatever God is, you are. He said, you're my heir. Come on, church. Are y'all lost? You are an heir to God. Whatever belongs to God, also yours today. Whatever was bequeathed unto the Son of Glory has been bequeathed because we are the sons and daughters of God Almighty, say the Lord God. Whatever thing that God has instilled in Him is instilled in us. Whatever God has gave to Him, He gave it to us. We are equal. Because we also are eternal. We choose not to make a reputation for ourselves. But he has God, Christ gave all glory to God. We give all glory to Christ. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That goes to God through Christ. Yes. Yeah. You can change. Mm -hmm. You can change. Yes. You can change. Yes. The power of change worketh inside of you. Yes. Yes. But you have to want to. Mm -hmm. yes. Because, amen, believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, God is not a bully. Ooh, That's why you can sit in any church and never open your mouth, because he'll never make you open your mouth. Amen. You'll feel him, mm -hmm. but he'll never force you to. Right. Yeah. Because it's just like an abusive relationship. A man can force you to do whatever he wants to do with you and never do it because you love him. Right. Therefore, he'll never have you. That's right. That's right. That is true. He can never have you until you love him. Amen. 
Did you hear what I said? Because when you love him, the next thing you do is born out of your love and you go into it. Yes, sir. God said, I don't want it if it's not out of love. Amen. When you praise me, it got to be out of love. Yes, when you worship me, it got to be out of love. Yes, when you serve me, yes. it gets, not because you're afraid of any penalty, you're afraid of any hostilities, you're afraid of any amen situation, but I want you to do what you do for me because I love you and you love me back. That's right. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to hear you magnify my name because you love me because you know I first loved you. I don't hear anybody talking back to me now. I want the next dance you give me because you're dancing because you love me. Because heaven dances because I love you. The Bible says that the angels rejoice over a sinner. You rejoice me. They're leaping. They're howling. They're leaping. They're spinning. Well, you think you can catch up one day? When he healed your body, the angels rejoiced, but you didn't. When he delivered you, the angels rejoiced, but you didn't. Hallelujah. When he opened doors for you, amen, you were still complaining, but the angels were so glad because they loved you like he loved you. They rejoiced for you, but you didn't. My Jesus. My Jesus. You complained it wasn't enough. Come on, that's a complaint. Yes, Father. I only got one more little passage of scripture to close it. For he has made, for he has made him to be sin for us. That's why I don't worry about sin. You don't worry about sin. I ain't worried about sin. I, I'm not trying to find my way to do it every single moment. Every single but I'm not, I'm not somehow worrying about it. See, you, you're so worried that you can't even smile. You're afraid if I smile too hard, you'd be sinning. Who knew no sin? No. Here's the reason why. That we might be made the righteousness of God yes, hallelujah. in Him. I'm being made the righteousness of God. Are you? You know, my standings in God, in God is right in the sight of God. But I didn't do the right thing. He wasn't doing the right thing when you met him. Your stand is not based on you. It's based on the Christ. Everything you got came through Christ. He was the one that reconciled you in himself to God. He is your mediator. He is the engrafter. You went into him first. And then he presented you to God. Yes. God accepted you because he accepted his son whom you were engrafted with. And he made you one with his son. And until God gets mad at Jesus, he can't get mad at me. All right. Oh, praise God. Until God abandons Jesus, he can't abandon me. Come on. Until God, amen, denies the Christ, he can't deny me. If I don't deny him, he won't deny me. And believe it or not, the off times that you sit in this church or anywhere else you go, and you keep your mouth shut when you know the Spirit of God is moving on you, you are denying Christ, and at that moment you're being denied. Make up your mind and sign the you will stand on. Don't worry about who else is praising God and whether you believe in the Spirit or not. That ain't none of your business. You make sure that you are. Because they're not got to do all that. But you know, if you're doing what you're doing from here and you're doing it earnest, earnestly, yes. it's acceptable. Thank you, Jesus. It's Thank acceptable. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm digging a ditch to build a pool. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I trouble the water in the name of Thank Jesus, Jesus. it's not made for one Thank person to be doing if I come to you and holler, I'm not screaming at you. I'm screaming at what's holding you, God, captive. All right, man. <laughs> All right. Don't suddenly get a bladder I'm probably going to run to the bathroom because I will come to the bathroom door and put my hand on it. Amen. And holler it through the bathroom door. All right. Make it pee yourself in there. <laughs> because I know that spirit makes you run from the Holy Spirit. All right. But well, how can it be a spirit? He put in your mind to run at a certain time. 
When you hear it holler, wake up in the name of Jesus, you foul one. Well, don't get mad. Because I said you're a foul demon. Because you do have one. He's foul because he's keeping you from, amen, listening to the Holy Spirit. That you may walk in the liberty of the Holy Ghost. And what you do when you leave here, I'm not with you. But I will say this. There are occasions when I'm praying that I behold your spirits wherever you are. Amen. Not all the time. And some of you are sitting in here lying to me about your relationship to Jesus Christ. I just don't say anything to you about it. Amen. You know why I don't say anything to you? Because he's your judge, not me. Amen. So if you hear the trumpet and you don't move, don't get mad. Mm -hmm. You have one more chance. You have to be a martyr for your salvation sake. You have to starve to death, get your head chopped off, get burned to a stake, be abused, whatever they're going to do to you until, you try to, until they try to make you denounce Christ. But this is the time. The day's the, day the time. Some of y'all really want to go to glory, don't you? Don't you really want to go to glory? I don't care if I ever reach the full potential that God has. Just make sure I reach, reach glory. But you got to start from where you are, not from where you hope to be. you got to start from where you are, where you are right now. Where you are this minute, Amen. where you are this second, yeah. where you are this hour. Yeah. You got to forget those things that drop behind you. Yeah. Let them go. Release them. You got to check your ambition against your relationship. I said it before, and every time I say it, I feel a shift in the spirit in why I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. I just say it anyway. You put your want above his will. And you try to make what you're doing his will when it wasn't his will. Because it wasn't his will that you got so engrossed that you left him. It wasn't his will that you got so caught up that he became second class. Whether it was your job, your career, or your marriage, or your children. When God became second, you got an eye on your heart. He gave you what he gave you to be a blessing to you, but not for you to worship it. Amen. And you worship it every time it takes precedence over what you should do. Amen. Right. That's true. Amen. Thank you. The past thing you just want to go to, I, see, here's the problem about your church. You think because you came to church, that's all you're supposed to do. Right. He said, forsake not the sending of yourselves together. And don't give me that malarkey about, I got things to do. I don't even want to hear that. Mm -hmm. That means that the things you got to do has taken precedence over what God's word said. So I felt the shift again. Yes. Which means somebody's not going to obey. Uh -huh. Amen. Which is none of my business because I'm not here to judge you. I do know if you be willing and obedient, mm -hmm. yeah. if you be willing and obedient, see, some of you obey because you have to, because you want God on you. Mm -hmm. But the reason why your life is in such disarray is because you left your first love. Amen. You love him, but you love him from a distance. Come on, you know, it's not too often that distant relationships work out. I can't love you from here to California because I need to touch you. I need to feel you. I need to see you. I need to smell you. Come on, somebody. The letters are good, but it ain't, it ain't cutting the mustard. Amen. And that's how you're loving Jesus from a distance. You love him. But somehow the end love is starting to dry out, it's drying up. Because you have to be able to touch what you love. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. You have to be able to get close to what you love. Yes. You want to be next to it. Come yes. on, Brother Joe. Yes. You have to somehow feel the heat of it, feel the warmth. If anyone want a hand touch, you got to touch the doors of the sensation. Ah. You're too far away, I can't touch you because it's stuck to you. Yes. It's not that my hands are too short where I cannot save. I can't save you, but your iniquities in my way. Yeah. Wow. You keep laying cockatrice eggs. That's not a rooster, that's a snake. Yes, it is. You're out in the woods running from the bear, you got on the line, you got home with a snake bitch. Mm -hmm. oh. You're serving for half of a heart. You're doing what I told you to do, but your heart's still not right. Come on. God bless. God bless. Did everybody hear the message? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm digging in there. I'm digging out of the ditch. I put the pool there. Amen. But I need to tell you first because in this word of God, I believe it. 
I, that's not the only place I've seen when somebody spoke. They were speaking to us the entire Bible. That's what I do. It's the word. Yes, it is. And I believe the word and I speak to, I expect it to have the same effect. Yes. I expect it to have the same effect. Yeah. If it doesn't, there's only two reasons why it won't. Either I'm not where I should be, or you simply don't believe. Mm -hmm. It's not magical. You don't have the faith to mix in the word of God. All right. These mothers are gonna to go to the hospital, they believe they're gonna have healthy babies. Yes, absolutely. They don't even question it. They had an ultrasound, didn't they? Yeah. Ultrasound said they had all ten toes. Blah, 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 blah. You know, Lord God, I want to thank you. But let me tell you something. The devil always work on the outside. Sometimes the defect is on the inside. And this is where your prayer and your praise come into your own personal life. Sometimes we can't see the defect. You look normal out here. Twisted in here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you pass, may I use a, a strange word, your twistation on somebody else. Mm -hmm. God has to unravel you. Yes, Jesus. And it's not painful. You know what painful? You fight against it. Jesus. It takes all of three seconds to get a needle shot in your arm. Three seconds. But you don't fight for two hours to keep it out of your arm. You could have got things over with. Yes. But you're yelling at them trying to kill you. And all God says, just be still for a minute. You're going to feel a slight prick. It's a prick. Now, once the needle goes in and it's done, you're like, oh, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> but you heard your best was a child. They didn't even that big. <laughs> they stuck, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you, now you're scared. <laughs> That's what the devil's doing to you right now. He's making you afraid of something you ain't even tried yet. You're scared of what's going to happen, and you ain't even tried it. Come on. You're terrified of it, and you ain't even tried it. Come on, Pastor. I hated Brussels sprouts. Yes, you did. I didn't mean the word hate. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I'll die if I eat a Brussels sprout. Man, Mother Matt put some butter on that Brussels sprout. Brother, try it. No, I don't even know Brother, just try it. That's how God did. Just try it. He's talking. He didn't say, oh, man, we fixed up. He said, just try it. I said, I don't, brother, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I, oh, God. Oh. He said, brother, just, if, if, just try one, okay? That's the persuasion power of the Holy Spirit. Because I loved him. Yeah. It's the it love that can be It is the love. And believe me, I looked at it like this. Yes, you did. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing happening. You know, when you eat something, you can move real slow.
do what God tells you to do or do what you feel in your heart. Don't, don't keep denying them. Don't, don't do that. Stop looking for reasons why you shouldn't. It don't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense because it's not designed for the rational mind. It's designed for the creature born of faith. Faith is not rational. Faith is irrational. Faith doesn't understand how you can walk on water. The natural man, you can't walk on water. Because water has no solid base. It's not ice. Faith said, I can walk on that, the currents of the air. I can walk on anything. Because faith doesn't need substance. It just needs belief. In the person that said they could. If it be thou, Jesus, bid me. And he said, come. that's all he said. He didn't say, come step on the water, let's walk. He said, just come here. Yes. He walked yes, he on the water. Yes, he did. I'm asking you to try God by faith. That's the best that I can ask you to do, because that's what God asked you to try. And so this is near judging the reason why you can't and going back in your mind and looking at people and they looking at me all saying, I can't praise God and they looking at me strange. I'm looking at you strange because you can't. God is still scratching his head trying to figure what's wrong when he, when he gave you the Holy Spirit. If the only time you can dance is when your favorite music comes, then they need to check your salvation. Hey! If you don't feel joy any other time, the time that, that iPod is playing, if this is not a praise you, amen, the only time you got to praise you when the iPod's playing, the only time you got to praise you when the choir, if the choir, choir got no praise you, they just stop singing. That's I know that's right. right. That's if all y'all do is stand there and look like somebody slapped you in the face with a lemon pie, Come you need to sit it down. Come you on. ain't got no joy. Come on. If you get this guy, if, 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 if one of your sisters, I mean, get, got the, you got to out yell one another, you allow your other sister to set your foot down so we all sing this song along. Because the Spirit of God is harmony. Yes, it is. It's unity. Yes, it is. To my, my, my sister in the back, I understand you're pregnant, praise God, but your hands ain't broke. Amen. Get them up. Clap them loud. Your husband with you, drag him into praise. <laughs> if he start moving because you praise God to the to the mother of our church, then you start looking like that. Did I marry the right person? <laughs> because you and I are supposed to be together this thing. Don't you question do you love the Lord? I said question. Do you love the Lord? I want to know if you love the Lord, because I'm supposed to marry you in Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you don't love the Lord, let me know now so we can end this thing. Because you're not dragging me to hell with you. Husband, same thing. You have to give God the praise. This look at you. Excuse me. Do you, you do have to hold it up. Because I married you thinking you were saved. You sound saved when I said I do. You look saved before I said I do. You have to praise before I said. Now you I, you don't you won't. I need somebody who loves the Lord like me. I need somebody hey! who's going to give God the praise like me. I don't need you to preach my praise because you're uncomfortable listening to me praise God. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just going to miss you. I love you. I adore you. You didn't want to listen. Well, you didn't want I can't help you. Amen. Well, Pastor, pray me through. I can't pray you through when you're rebellious against God. Did I just tell the truth? Yes. I have not the power to make you do what God is requesting you to do. Amen. Only you have that kind of authority. That's what's called will. Only you can choose to do it because you want to. And you love him. And you love him. Yes. And you love him. Yes. I'm not clear. I don't care about your falls, your stumbles, your bones. Before Jesus comes back, y'all gonna fall a million times. Yes. And as he comes back in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> but he's a restorer and he promised yeah. Philippians 1 and 6 Philippians 1 and 6 no, I can do all things in Christ no. he, he that begun a good work in you what yeah. See, that's a promise that's a prophetical statement so stop worrying about your fall and realize his promise 
For he that promised is able to perform what he promised. Yeah. That's why Paul said, I'm, 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 he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. God bless. Put your hands together and give God a praise.